Good afternoon, my friend, and uh, welcome to week number three of our online teaching for Canadian Study 25 of St. Joseph High School. Well, guys, I hope that you had had a very good Easter weekend, that you took the time to rejoice, to took the time to count your blessing, and for most, to spend good old quality time with your family members. Well, guys, a reminders. Number one, some of you still have to provide me with Learning Guide 4, if you have not done already so. As you know, all of the information are available into our Canadian Study 25 Google Classroom site. You can look into the classwork or you can look into the stream where you're going to find the instruction, direction, and so on. As well, you know that in the last couple of weeks, we have completed Learning Guide 5, Global Right. Last week, on April the 3rd, was the deadline to submit the first of the two assignments of Learning Guide 5. For those of you, who have not done so, please get it done at your earliest convenience. As far as last week's assignment, the second half of Learning Guide 5 on Global Rights, the deadline is today or in the next couple of days. Friends, please try to produce your work whenever you can. I know some of you are struggling right now with technologies. I know that some of you are struggling right now with the languages, even by reading the book. I know some of you will find it difficult, but it is in time of adversity that we find our inner greatness. Do not forget that, my friend. Do not feel overwhelmed. You can only do your best and you will get better with time. Second half of Learning Guide 5, as I mentioned, is as of today. Do not forget, guys, once I have marked your two assignments for Learning Guide 5, the total sum of your two marks are divided by two, and it gives you your final grade for Learning Guide 5. You know I'm always sending you email, <laughs> telling you your mark. Doesn't matter if you do it to the Google Classroom document or if you do it directly with the Word version document that I have started to include last week. It's the same thing at the end. Do not forget, if you are choosing to use the Word document version of the first, our second half of Learning Guide 5, the assignment, you must send it back to me directly at my email address, denis.potvin at ecsd.net and just attach the Word document with it. Okay, and I'm doing everything in my power to have everything done in due time but you must understand the reality of the situation. We are online. It takes me longer to get the work done. So a little bit of patience would be very appreciated as well. For those of you that are sending me 10,000 email a week, those of you who are sending me copies of their work 200 times a week, do not forget my instructions. Once I receive your work, I will only reply, okay. That means that I have it. If I have difficulty opening your document, I'm emailing it back to you, letting you, letting you know so you can send it again. For those of you who complete your work using the Google Classroom document, you know that I'm editing right away the work on the paper, punch the marks, and you might come in and return your mark. You know that. You also know 
that I'm punching into power school your final mark for each learning guides upon completion of assignment. You also know that I will be extremely patient into waiting for your work. Time is on our side right now, but do not fall behind with your other courses. You must give sign of life to your teachers. You must let your teacher advisors know if you are experimenting struggle. If you do not have any technology at home to help you do your work, you must let your TA know so your TA can talk to no one's left behind. This week, don't forget, when I play with my index finger, I'm just waiting for the connection. This week and next week, we will be working with Learning Guide 6 and Chapter 6 in your book, where we're going to talk about democratic citizenship. That means the beginning of democracy around the world. For this week's assignment, I have included as well within the document, the Google classroom document that you will have now instruction following each question to make it even easier for you to find the answers in the book and so on if you look at the document of this week assignment you will see that after each question as i mentioned i put information as an example to find answer number one of learning activity two, go to page blah, 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 paragraph, blah, blah, blah. Therefore, you will find the answer. And I know you are following me on that. This week assignment, my friend, will deal with learning activity two and learning activity three of Learning Guide 6 on Democratic Citizenship. This week, to complete the assignment, you will need to read between page 132 in our book, the first page of chapter 6, starting with what is a democracy, and you will need to keep enforcement at the bottom right here on page 146 this is where you stop reading let me now give you some specific to help you find your answer okay guys this is the document your learning activity two question one ask you refer to your book people in place and read page 132 and 133 it explained to you that at the beginning of time, in a city country of Athens, at the time Greece was not the country that we use to know today. There were regions within of Athens. Athens was a city country. This is in the city of Athens, in today's Greece where the model of democracy began. We call that direct democracy. Democracy comes from two Greek words named demos, krasia. Demos means demo today, that means people. And krasia means krasi, in the power of people. That means that in the city of Athens, not under the leadership of a king or a queen or so on. But needed to be born in the city of Athens. They could not be foreigner. They needed to own wealth from the city of Athens. Therefore, Connection is not very good right now, guys. Okay. Therefore, out of 300,000 people living in Athens at the time, no woman, no children, no foreigner, no slave were allowed to vote. 
Only male model of democracy was a direct model where every citizen entitled to vote were voting on every question that needed an answer within their country city. Today, you know, we don't do that. We live in a represent of vote during an election that will represent us politically. We have all learned that in Canada, we have three levels of government. The federal government, that's in Ottawa, where the member of parliament, the MPs, come from every region of Canada to talk, propose, modify, and vote the laws of our country. We also have a level of government at the provincial level, like in Alberta where all of us, 18 years old or older, go vote for a premier but in a city like the city of Edmonton, where every man and woman of 18 years old go vote for a mayor or for the city councillor. So those are our level of government. Democracy today, local, provincial, and federal. To help you with the question now, Learning activity to ask you question one. Point of democracy as it was practiced in ancient Athens. You will find the answer by reading page 132 in the bottom and the one paragraph of page one. The point of the model of democracy. For question number two, ask you, list the date when the following groups on page 134 in your book. By looking into the section on top, woman and the right to vote, and looking at the bottom of page 134, you will find that. Question number three. ask you, what is the difference between direct democracy and representative democracy? And I just explained it at the beginning of the seminar. You will find this answer by when you look at direct democracy and referendum on page 136. You will find, as an example, in the first three, four lines, direct democracy where an entire electorate, electorate of the people that have the right to vote, is asked to accept or reject a proposal. They do this with a direct vote called a referendum. This is direct democracy. And when you look at page 137 in a section of representative democracy, and you look at the top of the page, you're going to see in bold representative democracy. The most citizen vote for a representative every three or four years. This representative act on behalf of the citizen in the electoral district that would be on riding, like Edmonton downtown. The, they vote on proposal that become the new law, laws. They have the power to make important political decisions. This is the answer of representative democracy. So to answer 3A and B, you know, the two little piece of answer, look at this page and check the first couple lines of page 136 and the first paragraph of page 137. Question number four asks you on page 138. We see the photo of four modern dictators. Pick one of them and write a quick what they have done. So when you look at page 138, at the top, they talk about what is a dictatorship. Dictator is the always. This limit challenge to their power and their authority. If you look at figure 6.6, .6, that man there is Fidel Castro of Cuba. He's not dead. He's the one that brought communism 
into the country of Cuba in the late 19th Joseph Stalin. He was the dictator of Russia, of the USSR. We can say you are the third dictator that you have in front of you at 6-8 is Mao Zedong of China. He became the dictator of China in the year 1949. And the fourth one on figure 6 dash, he was the dictator of Germany from 1933. From 1933 to 1945. So the question asks you, you pick one of the four, the one that you are most comfortable with. You can do a little bit of research on the internet just by just wiki, by just having a wiki on what who is Joseph Stalin and so on. And by reading the little information that come with each figure 6.6, 6, 0.7, 0.8 and point nine. So you only need to write a quick little paragraph or three, four line, or even three line, I'm happy. What did they believe and what were they doing when they were dictators? Very easy. The second learning activity is learning activity three, and it will ask you to read between page 139 to 146 in your book. The first question asks you, what are the name we give to our elected representative at the three different level of government? You will find that answer at the bottom of page 139 in what we call figure 6-12. When you look at it, you will see that for municipal, we call them city councilor and the mayor. That at the provincial level, we call them the member of the legislative assembly, MLE, and the premier. And at the federal level, we call them member of parliament and the prime minister. This is your answer for question one of learning activity three. If you look now at question number two, in this week assignment, what two things do elected representatives have to balance when casting their vote to make laws? You will find this answer, my friend, on page 139 at the top. When you look at that paragraph, name elected representative, you will see when they have to vote on an important issue, they usually follow the platform of their political party. This is your answer right there. Okay, guys? And if you keep reading, elected representative must also represent the will and the needs of the people who elected them. This is your answer for question number two, my friend. Okay, on page 139, between line, let me just give that to you guys. Between line three, four, five, and six. This is where you're going to find the answer. Question number three, guys, ask you now, are does the Constitution of Canada and the Canadian Charter of Right and Freedom protect Canadian citizens. Don't forget, we talk about the Canadian Charter of Right and Freedom. This is an add-on to the Constitution of Canada that guarantees the right, an equal right to every Canadian permanent resident who are in Canada. We are all equal on our language, our beliefs, our values, and so on. So when you look at that question number three, how does the Constitution and the Canadian Charter of Right and Freedom protect Canadian citizens? You will find that answer, as I said, on page one, 
40, let me just see that text. On page 142, at the bottom, at the top of the page. See, guy, when you read it with me here. Canada at line three has built up protection for the right of all people. If change is needed, democracy allowed for it by talking, parliament debate, and the election process all provide an opportunity for change. This is the answer right now. Canadian citizens also have a guarantee provided by the government to the Canadian Charter of Right and Freedom. So when you look at that answer, and then if you go back now, to page 141, second paragraph, we see that on line three, Canadian citizens are fortunate to have a constitution and a Canadian charter of right and freedom. But your answer for that, number three, is on page 142 in that top paragraph on line seven, eight, and nine. Question number four ask you, why is freedom of expression? I apologize, guys. Such a con controversial right. What to write have to be? To find the answer, my friend, you are looking at page 142 and you look at figure 6-15 and look at the second bullet. The second bullet said on page 142, figure 6-15, freedom of thought, belief, opinion, and expression, including freedom of the press and other media of communication. And on the right, it says, in other words, this is where you find your answer. Canadians are free to think and believe as they choose. They are free to express their opinion and idea. Canadians are also free to express their opinion and idea in newspaper, radio, television, and the internet, and so long, and the answer is right there. As long as they do not infringe, that means breaking the right of others. So when you look at that question number four, Oh, we have the right of freedom, okay, of expression. We are basically allowed to say whatever we want, and it is guaranteed by the law. But while we speak, we cannot break the reputation. We cannot lie about someone. We cannot do anything that will compromise the reputation of someone or something, like a business. Otherwise, it becomes some kind of a crime. So this is the answer of that one. The next question and the last one, question number five. Canada has two official languages, English and French. Research and explain the history behind the law. You will find that answer, my friend, on page 146 when you look at the second name official language of Canada and minority language educational right. Let me read it for you guys. Canada has two official languages, English and French. This fact recognized the important role played by England and France in the historic development of our country. And if you look at the next section, in many parts of Canada, such as Southern Manitoba, part of New Brunswick and Quebec, Friends are guaranteed, this is the answer right there, Canadian citizens are guaranteed government service in the official language of their choice. This guaranteed exists because Canada is an official bilingual nation since 1969. Minority language education rights are also protected. That means that in Alberta, if there's enough francophone children born of a mom or a dad speaking French, they must open francophone school. 
in the province of Quebec. If there's enough people, a student with the mom or the dad or more anglophone, it is the, the right of these people to having their English speaking school in the province of Quebec as well. It goes both ways. We call that the, the bilingualism, bilingualism act. And it happened in 1969, but you do not need to write that in your answer. Okay, the history of the two law, as I said, you find it in the two little paragraph of page 146, official language and minority language. And the answer, okay, don't forget, guys, is in the second half of the section minority language educational rights. So for this week, my friend, this is the assignment. Don't forget, this assignment is due this coming Friday, April 17. But you know I'm very lenient into waiting for you to give me your work. I am aware that, that there are other more important issues that need to be solved in each of your household on a daily basis. But I'm inviting you to create yourself a routine. Stop sleeping till 12, 1 o'clock in the afternoon and to play video game till 3 a.m. That's what I mean. Try to wake up at about the same time every day. Not at 6 a.m., but maybe at 8 a.m. or 8.30 a.m. Take a shower or have your breakfast. Get dressed. It goes a long way to be dressed once in a while. But for most, Create yourself a new way of coming to school. What I mean by that, you must, if you do not have technologies at home, if you do not have technology at home, you must contact your teacher advisor and let them know so your TA can phone the school to see what we can do to help you. You must give sign of life to all of your course advisor. What I mean by that, you need to let them know that you are around and that you're doing some work at your own pace. Because everybody is in the same boat, but everybody will have different means of fulfilling their goal, of getting it done. Maybe in your home, you might have one laptop for three people. That's why I'm putting those live video stream into a Google Classroom every day so you can view them at your convenience. This Thursday more afternoon at 12.15, we will try a Microsoft team meeting session where I'm going to invite you to click on the link so you can interact with other people in a classroom at 12.15 on Thursday, like I do at work. I'm still learning how to use that. I don't believe it's very complicated, but I'm also aware of the technology you can connect by using your smartphone with that one, by downloading something, if I recall, Microsoft Team as an app. Check it out a tiny bit. On Thursday, I will not be the experts. You guys are the expert with these kind of technologies. So I, it might go very well. It might go really badly. Or we might all start laughing without stopping because I make so many mistakes, but that's okay. But this Thursday, we will try it. I will send you tomorrow an invitation to join that meeting. I will send it to you through via your Google Classroom and probably through a QMS message, depending which one I can reach the most people at one time. As well, my friend, do not fall too far behind with your classes. That's why I mean by you must give sign of life to your course advisor that you are doing work. Do not forget, teachers are still entering mark into power school for the work that is to be done. 
It's not because we do not do exam that the work is not added. You do not want to be in a situation where you are falling so far behind that it becomes impossible to catch up. Advisor ASAP. If you do not have the technology to help you to be successful with our courses, please go every day into our Google Classroom. Go check the messages that your CAs are sending you. Go check the video that I'm posting. And today I will be adding into our classwork section for this week assignment the little PowerPoint and little YouTube that you can watch that will help you out to better understand. You also know that by just going in the section classwork in our Google Classroom and by where all of the material is already, be creative, think outside the box. and go look at that material. You are also aware that I'm providing you every week with a link, with a little movie to watch, to help you out when you feel bluesy or bored and you don't know what to do with your life. Go check them out. They don't need to be checked if you don't want to check them out. I'm just providing you extra material. Do not forget, my friends, Tomorrow, there's no live stream session. It's Wednesday. That's the day where teachers contact each other to see how it goes, which students are doing work, and so on, what needs to be done. I will send you a reminder tomorrow of our, of our, as I said, our Microsoft video conference on Thursday. We will try it. If I struggle too much with it, Tough luck, I'm going back to live YouTube because I got put at ecsd.net. If you have specific, stay cool. Be helpful with with the people that you love, with your brothers and sisters and with your parents. It's tough on everybody. Okay, we are not alone. We're all in the same boat. And we will prevail. You don't forget, prevail means we will succeed. We will get out of it. But we must follow the directive provided to us by our government and health official. Don't forget to wash your hand with soap and water frequently. Maintaining your two meters social distancing if you have to go outside by also avoiding big crowd, if you can avoid it. That way we will stay healthy and it will diminish the amount of people that get sick from that COVID-19 virus right now. And stop believing everything that you see on the news and mostly on the internet. Rely only on reliable information sources, like from the World Health Organization, or from the United Nations, or from the Government of Canada, or from an app like cbc.ca to watch the CBC News. This is where they have the most relevant question and answer in regard to what's happening right now. And do not forget, guys, in about a week from now, it's going to get warmer outside. The bird's going to be chirping louder. It's going to smell better outside of the heat rain as well. And we will stop being like big brown bears hibernating in our house for the last six months before winter. This is why I'm asking you to keep doing what you're doing. On that, my friend, I will post that stream on our Google Classroom in the next couple of minutes. Do not forget to get your work done and stay the course. We will be okay. I miss you very, very much, my Frenchman, with the two results. And I know a lot of you can understand my Frenchy friend French. Be good and be kind and be tolerate yourself as well. Okay? 
guys do your best keep working hard and keep being helpful monsieur paul signing out au revoir bye bye